Hi, thanks so much for joining me today on Soap Queen TV. I'm Anne Marie from SoapQueen.com and Brambleberry.com. Today, I'm going to be going over some of the very basic terms around cold process soap making. If you're a new soap maker and you'd like to learn more, this is the episode for you. In future episodes, I'll be going over more things like fun recipes, how to use fragrance oils and essential oils, and how to use colorants. But for this episode, we're just going to be covering the very basics. If you haven't seen the episode I did on how to handle lye safely, please watch that. But if you've already seen that, grab a pencil and a piece of paper and let's get started. Humans have been making soap since around 2800 BC when they mixed alkaline salts with animal fats to make a kind of soap-like substance. Our grandparents, well, our great-great-grandparents, the pioneers, actually improved on this when they were able to drizzle water through the ashes of their fires to make more of a lye, a sodium hydroxide. They then mixed this with animal fats to make a basic soap. It was a little bit harsh. Today we've improved on that, and we've actually been able to turn this science into an art form where you can make beautiful handmade bars of soap easily at home and in your kitchen. One of the hardest things about making your soap is actually just deciding which oils to use. There's four great resources for you to draw from to design your perfect recipe. TeachSoap.com, SoapQueen.com, the Everything Soap Making Book by Elisa Grosho, and the Soap Maker's Companion by Susan Miller Cavage. These are great resources for you to draw upon to do your research from so that you create a personalized recipe that you love. Regardless of which oils you choose, make sure that they're fresh. You don't want to get DOS, dreaded orange spots on your soap. See these orange spots? They're unsightly, and they're a little sticky tacky, and they don't smell good. The soap itself wouldn't hurt you if you washed with it, but it doesn't smell good, doesn't look good. So maybe rethink using that avocado oil that's been sitting on your shelf for the last five years. When it comes time to making your soap, you'll measure out your oils, heat them up, add your lye to your water, and combine the lye water and the oils and start a process called saponification. Saponification simply is a fancy term that refers to the chemical process that happens when you mix oils with lye water. The oil and lye water react together to create a perfectly balanced bar of soap. If you have too much lye in this, your soap's pH will be too high, making the soap itchy on your skin. If you have too little lye in your soap, the resulting soap will be soft and greasy and might not even set up at all. To avoid either disaster, it's important to use a lye calculator. You can use one for free at brambleberry.com or download one for your iPhone or your iTouch at iTunes. I always use the iPhone application because it's so handy and so portable. It tells me exactly how much lye I need in my recipe. It also tells me how big my finished batch size will be so that I can use the perfectly sized mold for each and every batch. Another thing the lye calculator will do for you is figure out your super fat. A super fat simply refers to the amount of oil you put in your recipe that's above and beyond the amount the lye needs to turn your oil into soap. This means that if you do a 2% super fat, there will literally be 2% of the oils in your soap recipe that haven't saponified, they haven't reacted with the lye water, leaving extra skin loving and skin nourishing oils in your bar of soap. For beginners, I recommend a super fat of 5%. I don't like to go above 10% because I find the resulting soap is a little soft and the lather is usually inhibited by that much free floating oil in your bar. So how does a lye calculator work? Each and every oil has a sap value or a saponification value. The sap value simply refers to how much lye it will take to saponify or turn into soap one gram of oil. So how many milligrams of lye does it take to turn how many grams of oil into soap? Each and every single oil has a different sap value. This means when you're designing your recipe, you can't switch out oils without changing your entire recipe and running the whole thing through a lye calculator again. We're so lucky that we have lye calculators now because in the olden days, you had to do this by hand. And look how crazy that math looks. Now that we know the exact quantity of oil we want and the exact quantity of lye and water that we need, it's time to mix these together. I'm gonna prepare my lye water with my gloves on and my safety glasses on. 
And I'm sorry, I'm not giving you the recipe quite yet because I want you to watch all the basics before you start your soap making journey. It's important that you make great bars of soap every single time while doing it in a safe manner. To make sure that our oils and lye water are fully mixed together, I'm going to be using a stick blender. A stick blender really helps speed up the soap making process. Trace is another term you'll often hear in cold process soap making. Trace refers to the stage at which the oils and the lye water start combining together to make soap. Check this out. Can you see this? The thin trailings of soap on the surface of the soap? I know it's a little subtle and hard to see, but it's kind of like a very thin pudding stage. Once the soap has reached thin or medium trace, it's time to add your fragrance. I like to stir my fragrance oil in by hand, just in case there's any trouble. Once your fragrance is mixed in, it's time to pour this into the mold. Once you pour the soap into the mold, you can insulate the soap. Take a piece of plastic wrap and put it over the top of your soap mold. And then wrap the soap in a towel, put it to bed, and check it in the morning. Why the insulation? Well, sometimes if the soap cools too quickly, it can create soda ash or separation. Soda ash looks like a white powder on the top of your soap. It's not harmful in the slightest, and the soap can still be used. But let's be honest, it doesn't look that great. Just either wash off the top of the soap with cold water or use a knife to trim off the top of the soap and get rid of that soda ash. Within the first 15 minutes, your soap may start to go through gel phase. Don't panic. This is totally optional and it's the stage where the soap starts to kind of superheat up and get gelatinous in the middle. What happens if your soap gives into gel phase? Well, the resulting soap is a little more translucent and glossy than if the soap had not gone into gel phase. I know it's really subtle, but can you see on the inside of this soap bar? Do you see how it's a little darker, maybe the color a little bit brighter? That part of the soap went through gel phase. The outside didn't. And now we wait. This is probably the hardest part in soap making. Even though your soap is ready to take out of the molds and cut, usually within about one to three days, it's not ready to use yet. It takes a full four to six weeks for your soap to get the most mild and the pH to be as good as it possibly can get. Also, in that four to six weeks, your soap evaporates out up to 15% of its weight, all of it water weight. This means that the resulting soap lasts longer than the shower because it's harder. So what to do with your soap for the next four to six weeks? It's easy. Just slice it up and then place it in a cool to room temperature area so that your soap has good airflow making sure that the soap bars aren't touching each other, and sometime in the next four to six weeks, just turn the soap over so each side of the soap gets appropriate amounts of air to it. Thanks so much for joining me on today's episode of Soap Queen TV. I know I haven't given you a basic cold process soap making recipe yet. Don't worry, that's still to come. I just wanna make sure that you're totally comfortable with the basic terms and the process behind cold process soap making to ensure that your first few batches are safe and come out great. If you can't wait to get started though, I did make a 45 minute cold process soap making DVD that you can get at brambleberry.com or amazon.com. Until next time, happy soaping.